Coming up, a Sad Styles production. Get into it. So we're going to do the top 10 levels uh, this week on the podcast, uh -huh. which is really exciting. Yeah. And I was thinking, I didn't know where to put my favorite level, which is, of course, the app that levels things on my phone. Oh, that I... I was thinking two, three, two. Yeah, it's a tough. It's, it's two. I, I know what you're saying. It's yeah. tough as a, a number one because it's so obvious. Right. Exactly. Yeah. 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 I I was thinking as well. Uh, uh, the scales of justice oh, was, is going to be yeah. pretty high up on my list because you hope you you, you hope, hope it's level. But let but me they're tell blind. You. But it's blind. It's well, justice can't. I, here's the thing. Yeah. Take that fucking blindfold off, lady. Okay. They're out of balance right I'm now. Really glad you're bringing this up. Because Thank the you. other thing is, that lady doesn't know that she's a real smoke show. <laughs> She's beautiful. Do you think she doesn't know? She's blind. Mm -hmm. Also, I don't know if she's blind. I think she just has a... Oh, that's going to be really embarrassing one day when they tell her, like, you should just take the blindfold <laughs> off. She's like, oh my God, I can see this whole I time. I thought this was medical. And then she starts looking back in the court history and go, oh boy. <laughs> <laughs> oh no. We've got some problems on our hands. <laughs> and we've got our list of our top 10 favorite video game levels of all time this week on the Retrograde Podcast. Is that too much? And welcome to the Retrograde Video Game Podcast, where this week we count down the top 10 levels in video game history. Oh my God. Well, wait a second. Are mm -hmm. we talking about the top 10 levels in video game history or our top 10 levels of video game history? Well, Andrew, those are one and the same. <laughs> yes. Because <laughs> our word is law. And of course, my name is Andrew Baskin. With me as always, it's the bad boy of podcasting, Mr. Bebop himself. Mikey Aaronworth. Okay. So once we speak about it, that is final. Yes. Vulture will write up about us. <laughs> and it's about time they do. Yeah. I mean, it's good that you bring up the Vulture article because yeah. uh, we borrowed last Last week from uh, their list, which they went uh, went to public with, <laughs> <laughs> like the Panama Papers, <laughs> like, like the Panama Papers of their top 100. Yeah, someday there's going to be a movie written about this article. Yes, and Meryl Streep is going to uh, have like putty on her face the whole time, yes, and then at the yes. end of it, make like a very uh, a plea monologue to the camera. Yeah, you've seen the movie The Laundry, right? Or Dirty the Laundromat? La the Laundromat. The yeah, laundromat. I was also thinking, which is funny because she's in both. I was thinking mm. the what's it called? The Press? The no, the, the Steven Spielberg movie with Tom Hanks, and it's about the oh. Washington. It's about the Panama Papers. Oh, is that about team? releasing them in the Washington Post? Oh, with Ben Bradley. Okay. Oh, so she's in both. Meryl Streep was very passionate about that. Yeah, she's no. The, the Laundromat was the the strangest movie that I've seen uh, because the whole time I was like, this character who you're not supposed to know is Meryl Streep yeah. with like face putty on, but she's Meryl Streep the whole time. I'm like, that's fucking Meryl Streep <laughs> in face putty, and we're not going to talk about it. And at the end, she becomes a Statue of Liberty. I'm not yes, joking. This is actually what you happens. know what's funny though, Mikey, you. <laughs> You hammer the laundromat a lot. It's really the Assassin's Creed of movies for uh -huh. us. Yeah, of it's course. just we use it as a punchline a lot. This makes me scared that you watch like four movies a year because then you're like, you know, the laundromat. I'm like, Mikey, that came out like eight years ago. What's going on? Andrew, I just can't keep up with the references. I make a good one and yeah. I know I'm going to stick with it. Uh, wait, wait until you find out they just released Fast 10. You're like, 10? <laughs> oh my God. How many hours is each movie? The newest one is two and a half hours. Wow, that yeah. is not enough time. <laughs> no, no. That's not long enough. Well, he and also, also uh, Vin Diesel like teased out going like, hey, if you guys want, <laughs> uh, we might release a spinoff, The Toretto's. And I think he's serious. Oh, he's absolutely serious. And you're like, I think he's misunderstanding what we like about these movies. I don't know about that. Family? <laughs> it's family. It's family. Uh, no, we uh, we yes. last week took a look at uh, Vulture's top 100 hardest video game levels right. of all time. Uh, it was a great article. We linked to it in the show notes, all that good stuff. Yeah. We wanted to kind of follow up with a palate cleanse. You know, let's not talk difficult levels. Mm. Let's talk the best. Yes. We want to talk about the best levels that you or myself, Andrew Bascom or Mikey Aaron, were the two greatest video game journalists you've never heard of. Yes. What are our lists for the top 10? And then you can basically take these lists at you as the listener. Yeah. And no objectively speaking yeah what the 10 best levels 100%. are of all time. so to be clear the vulture one hardest yes this one best slash favorite which one which levels clear? make us the hardest <laughs> yes exactly oh that's weird to think about now thinking about my levels that i've named i'm like oh boy <laughs> oh this, i'm rock hard baby <laughs> that's always something they talk about in movies where they're just like this is so excited it got me hard has yeah. that ever happened to you no 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 i don't i don't I don't conflate. Then why are you so hard right now? I'm depressed. <laughs> <laughs> it goes the other yeah, way. Yeah. I don't conflate like success yeah. or danger yeah. with arousal. Yeah. Uh, Which is like, that's the thing. It's like, I saw like million dollars. I knew it was my first million dollars and I got hard like a rock. 100%. I don't sexualize money. I, so, okay. The way you said that, because definitely I don't associate success with eroticism. Right. 
danger on the other no, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that would suck so bad that oh would suck so god. bad oh my god like i think about and we'll get to video games in a second yeah, i'm here. sure but the do you ever think about how like uh some people have very specific fetishes yeah, and yeah, yeah, likes yeah. and desires sure. and they didn't choose to have them no they're just they're like, like mabel dormant born with it yeah um, and then they find it out one day. Sorry, I, I apologize. And this is not a shot at anyone with those no, things, no. but like, okay, like what you like, like what you like. That's great. I'm not going to yuck on your yum. As uh, I, I'm just saying, uh, the only thing Andrew yucks on oh, is the same uh, yuck on your yum. He I, hates. I hate that expression so much. It's disgusting and juvenile, and I don't like it. Juvenile. Yeah, yuck. I think it's very mature. You think saying you're yucking my yums is is mature? Well, you pluralized yums, and I think that's very immature of you. Oh, really? Yeah, I'm allowed to have many yums. Mm, I don't want to. I don't want to on your ability to pluralize yum thank you very much i appreciate that and i'm also disgusted by your use of that expression <laughs> wait wait well you know what i was gonna get mad at you for being disgusted but i don't want to yuck on your yeah. uh, willingness and ability to be disgusted at my love of the word yeah. Yum. Yeah. yeah yeah i guess i'm a pacifist but i also hate fascism so when a bullet kills a dictator i'm confused and conflicted <laughs> and it's much like this right i now. think you just described my thought process when playing the video game disco elysium <laughs> The whole time they're they're constantly begging you to make a decision as to like who you support, like the 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 communists, oh, okay. the the capitalists. They're all like the, wild, wildly like there. Nothing is like there. there so close. there is there is there's a moderate. Oh. Uh, uh, to, and the reason I'm bringing this up, actually, I did start playing Disco Elysium again from time really? to time. Basically, just trying to treat it like it's a book I'm reading. Okay. Just so I can kind of be like, you know what? There's a lot of reading in this. This is not my video game time. This is my reading time. Right. Because uh, to catch people up, Mikey wanted to desperately love Disco Elysium. I Elysium. really wanted to. You so tried. Hard. You tried yeah. so hard. You just couldn't get there. So I'm good, good for you for keep trying. I, I, I really, it is the game I've tried hardest to like in my life. Rock and, artist. Uh, and rock artist. <laughs> yeah, it's dangerous and I am into it. <laughs> Um, I, I, I am, I, I appreciate what it's trying to do, but I struggle with the fact that people are constantly asking me to pick a side and, and there are, you know, the communists and, and the, and the capitalists. And then you do have like all these other kind of sure. like union versus non-union and all there's like a okay. kind of like a, uh, 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 like a, I don't, a, I don't a know. spectrum kind oh, okay, of, yes, yeah, but right. that moves in multiple directions. So it's not just like very left or very okay, right. Yeah. But then you do have the moderate. Uh, people and okay. I was like, "That's me," because yeah. I think everyone should have the right to think the way they think, and sure. I, I think eventually we'll come to terms with, you know, our own reconciliation. Progress moves slowly, but right. you know, it's something that we're constantly chugging towards. Right. So, Until I had a conversation with like the guy who's supposed to ask you if you're moderate, like the leader of the oh, Mars, okay. and every time you ask this guy a question, he doesn't really answer it. <laughs> you're just like, you're like, well, you're like, I know you're talking about uh, uh, the there's like a word for like a big system or like a delineation of, okay. of currency or something thing and uh or like it's basically saying like status quo and you're like okay but what is the status quo like what is your definition of that and he's like it's a great question it's a very all-encompassing term and i think it is going to bring a lot of benefit to it and he's like no no, no i'm asking you what and i was like i can't be that person everyone just kind of sucks in that game did you add did you follow up any questions like what can you detail your yums please <laughs> now <laughs> I, I follow-up did. question what are your yucks i did what what are what are your yucks and he said my yucks are capitalism oh. and communism <laughs> You're like, and i said uh, huh. okay 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 uh, all right i can jam i can jam <laughs> with this uh yeah so i i mean i i can continue to update i i think i'm just not gonna bring up disco elysium again until i beat it if and until i beat it uh but, smart. but we'll see yeah. smart yeah. Yeah, yeah uh we also want to give a little bit of an update obviously it's been a few weeks since we've talked about the legend of zelda tears yeah. of the kingdom a game that you and i are both really feverishly working our way through yes we figured we could continually talk about it week after week or we could save it all for one more catch-up episode which will happen soon yeah. and that episode will basically be uh what we're calling tales from hyrule yeah. and we'll talk about some of our personal experiences running through the lands of hyrule and uh and uh either like some very specific things or some general thoughts but that'll be our opportunity to kind of like catch everyone up on that progress absolutely so get get, get your thoughts on tears of kingdom in uh let us know what you're thinking about the game so far we'll, we'll read people's thoughts interesting yeah. experience Experiences. What was the most creative thing you've made with your ultra hand? Uh, mm. Yeah, yeah. We'll see about that. And I'm not gonna uh, yuck on your yum. Uh, no, you can create if you whatever like you want. The ultra hand. That's great. That's great. Mm -hmm. No, I'm just. Saying. Oh no, no, nothing. nothing nope. Nothing no follow up. No, no follow -up. stupid name. Um, uh, I. 
Very good name. I am excited to to talk about uh, uh, more Tears of the Kingdom. I yes. have been playing quite a bit of it. It's there, the, it is this year's Elden Ring in the sense that it just feels like something that we're going to be talking about and bringing up yes. week after week uh, up and until such time as we complete it, which will be six years from now. I don't know. <laughs> no idea. The game seems gigantic. It is massive. It, I, I feel like I am making no progress. And then you kind of look around. You're like, oh, I've done a lot. You're like, but ah. like also relative to the rest of the game. Oh, I yeah. haven't. Yeah. Well, I just don't understand, though. You also, like, you go on Twitter or something like that, and somebody has, like, created the Apollo spaceship. Yes. And you're like, what the fuck happened here? How I, did I do this? They're playing a different game. Yeah. A different game. And it's funny, you know, we did talk about this, and we'll get more into detail in the actual episode, but, like, as your first Zelda game, I, I still would argue that you don't know what Zelda is after playing this one. This is so different from what Zelda is traditionally, but maybe this is just what Zelda is now going forward. It was a wildly different experience. Well, I would agree with you based on my progress. I don't know what Zelda is. I don't know who Zelda is. <laughs> Every once in a while, you'll get the like, hey, just don't forget, I'm still out here. And you're like, oh, right. right. There's oh, a missing princess God. somewhere. Stop dicking around. <laughs> like, Shit. We got to do this. Imagine you're a princess. Okay. I'm not going to yuck on your yum. Do it. Do what? <laughs> Imagine you're a princess. Okay, I am. Stop being so hard right now. Andrew. Okay. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> uh, and and you've gone missing. Uh-huh. And you're like, it's okay. There's a person in this land of Hyrule whose dedicated job it is to save me from right. peril. Yes. Um, let me check in on this person and see what he's doing. And he's just fused a long <laughs> log and two big boulders to it. And he's been spinning it around like yeah. a dick. And yeah. just like into a cave. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Like, and I'm like, <laughs> he'll like, come for me soon. <laughs> yeah. Cause you got to loudly say, stop playing with your ultra hands. And you're mm. like, yeah, okay. All right. I see what we're doing here. I like it. I yeah. like it. Yeah. It's uh, uh, I agree though. It's, it's, it's hard to feel like you're making any progress in it, but we have been making progress. We, have, we will we update have. everyone on that. Uh, in the coming weeks it'll be a lot of fun Can't wait. uh instead of uh belaboring that point okay about when eventually we're going to talk about zelda andrew <laughs> let's talk about our top 10 favorite levels of all time uh and clearly you're not going to have anywhere from zelda on your list i don't know because you don't play zelda i know there could have been so many great games and so many levels to choose from could have well a ton of them uh is, great, is there any is there any zelda on your list? well you're gonna have to find out andrew Whoa. i don't know that what i could tease. just say that before we get started okay all right i think in the last episode that we did like this you started off so okay uh, do you mind if i get started with my number 10 on this list andrew like nothing would make me happier and okay fine then i will i love making you happy andrew my number 10 so again Jesus. actually before we get into our lists i always kind of like to do oh. this establish some of the elements that went into yes. making these selections so okay we to choose your best and favorite the levels of all time yeah we also just once again we create lists we don't talk to each other yes we don't know what's on each other's list and the rule always is that if uh, a level shows up on both of our lists, we wait for the person to have the uh, higher number on the list and then we talk about it. So if I choose at 10 and you have it at two, then we're going to wait until number two on your selection before we actually talk about it. Absolutely. So favorite, it's, there's a large part that's memorable. Like if I close my eyes and I remember a very specific level. Yeah. Uh, which is different than a moment. I also want to say, okay. there are moments that happen inside of kind of a non-consequential level or a level that doesn't leave yes. stand out. Yep. And that is different than uh, than than having a great level, sure. which to be honest is like a lot of things. It's design, yep. difficulty, music, yes. uh, and remembering the beginning and the end. I also used areas yes. as a way of getting around that too. So like some, a lot of modern games or open worlds don't really have levels anymore. For sure. So I chose areas for those instead. So areas are great because... One, one thing we want to make clear is, you know, we did a couple weeks ago do our top 10 places to live in real life yes. episode. And this is different than that because it is more about the game itself. Yeah, playing the game. Playing the game. Yes. And I agree with you, Andrew. I, I had that feeling of, well, in an open world game, what constitute a level constitutes a level. And I took it to mean one of several things. It could be a side mission. Mm-hmm. could be a part of the main mission. Sure. It could be a specific area within an overworld in which specific things happen. Yeah. So that can be a level just like, uh, uh, you know, in 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 uh, like a platformer game, you can have one level and it's just one set area. Yes. And you could like it because it's fun or because it's designed well. Mm-hmm. Like you said, bring up music was yep. really good because that sense memory has a lot to play into it. Uh, I thought I thought that uh, that that had a lot uh, to, 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 to kind of inform whether these came on my list. Uh, consideration, in my opinion, was given to the uniqueness of an experience oh, sure. as well. Okay. If it's something unlike anything else I've experienced in games, that'll kind of give it a leg up. If it's something that eventually you experience a lot, then maybe I would have given preference to the first time it's ever happened to me in a game, for example. Fair enough, yes. Um, if there were many options in a game for one which could work, I tried to get as specifically level-based as possible. So if there were a game with a lot of cool areas, but one moment tied to a level 
that was very clearly defined as a level, I would probably give preference to the level, even if another area or moment was actually cooler, if that makes sense. Oh, if something was more clearly defined as a level and was comparable, yeah. I usually went with with the level I specifically. See. Okay, that makes sense. Yeah. To me. Uh, and, and to me, I, you know, levels can be usually it's a specific moment or a mission within a greater area, but sometimes it's the experience of being within the area as well that makes mm -hmm. it uh, uh, special. Although I, I do also give preference to moments where there are specific ob objectives, like a clear beginning and an end to the moment, mm -hmm. if, if it is a moment that I'm talking about. Gotcha. Okay, yeah. that makes sense to me. Can I explain my picks more to you? Uh, no. Because I've got please, like seven more pages please, of notes. Please, God, don't. <laughs> <laughs> okay, <laughs> All right, okay. you're going to start? Yes, I'm going to start. My number, number my number 10. Uh, this was an number 10. Number 10. <laughs> uh, we should get some shock jock numbers. We for this. should. I mean, we've been doing so many top 10 lists. I know. We got to get a, a third person, though. We, it can't be our voices. Well, Elliot. Oh, we'll get Elliot to do it. Yeah, that's yeah. actually a good call. Although we haven't traditionally allowed Elliot to speak on the podcast. And I'd like that to continue, to be honest. I think it would. It's I better for the like podcast. To, yeah, it's better for the podcast yeah. and better for our mental health. Probably <laughs> worse like, for Elliot. Though. I like we look over at Elliot. Elliot's just like... You're like, nice, perfect, good. Yep. Nice, keep, zip them. Why don't you Mr. Mind that mouth of yours and uh, <laughs> keep looking confused. Sexy. Uh, oh, wait, what'd you say? Confused? Mm -hmm. uh, well, well, it's confusing me because he's so sexy. Yeah, exactly. Mr. Yeah. Mind, what a sexy guy. Yeah, I'm not going to yuck on his yum. No, God, um, stop the, <laughs> this was a specific moment uh, in a game that I do think very clearly is, const uh, is defined as being a level. It was a moment that differed video games in a few different ways for me. When you think about video games of a certain era, especially an earlier era, usually you as the protagonist are the driver of the story. You're the most powerful person in in that world. You're also, uh, there's a very clear uh, path that you have to follow to to victory. Yep. And if you stay on it and you, and you do what you're supposed to do, you won't die. Okay. Randomization isn't usually an element of it. This level was one of the first experiences I had where I felt simultaneously small in comparison to the rest of the game oh. and at risk of dying no matter what without it actually being my fault. And that sounds like it should be bad, but in the right. context of the world that I was being dropped in, which is World War II, it was Operation Overlord, the the first level from the original Call of Duty game. Wow. Okay. I don't have this, but I have something very similar. Okay, up. cool. So we can talk about this. Okay. I'm just saying, but yeah. So wow. Probably for similar reasons. Yes. Then, because there's this, so in it to, as a, as kind of a, a summary of what happens in Operation yeah, Overlord, or I'm, I'm sure it's like Operation Overlord was probably like the whole story of the original Call of Duty. This is just kind of the first moment of it. You paratroop into a like behind enemy lines a little yeah. bit, just like Owen Wilson did. Yes. And he uh, you you kind of like facility or something from Goldeneye. You're just like in behind enemy lines and you you see some enemies that aren't expecting you. You take them out and then all of a sudden your mission is to meet up with the rest of your crew because you all parachuted in and you're, you're landing in different areas. It is also the plot of Band of Brothers. A Band of Brothers. Yes. Yeah, no, yeah. It's very much. So. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And uh, the first time that gunfire breaks out large scale gunfire you have allies literal literal allies mm -hmm. and your allies mm -hmm. on on uh, on your side flanking you're sprinting across a field where mortars are dropping you're taking cover behind cows uh there's there's tons of enemies shooting you can shoot one of them but it's very rare you're going to kill all of them your friends are shooting people they're shooting you and your friends yeah mortars are falling at random and killing you you have no idea whether you're going to get hit sometimes you just do so that feeling of randomization the feeling of helplessness really helped instill this this idea of like you know war is turns out pretty shitty oh my god pretty hard I know, and I wouldn't have known that unless for Call of Duty. I don't think I ever, and I am still not sure how okay. much I believe right. it. I think the game might be harder than Real War. See, I've, been, so I've had that theory for a while. Right, and I'm probably never going to find out. I, I, I pray I, I don't. Uh, you know who prays that that I never find out? That? My enemies. Mm. Because if I do, I leave oh, it. Oh, Andrew, I'm <laughs> fucking I'm so mad about I'm Legal killing. Legal yeah, killing. You're just like, oh no, oh. the rules don't count for him anymore. I'm licking my lips at the yeah. idea of it. I, you know, it's so funny. I play Call of Duty. I'm like, I don't know. War might be pretty good. Yeah. And then I die mm. and I go, I'm still not sure. And then they show me a quote from Abraham Lincoln and I'm <laughs> like, war is hell? No way. No way. Okay. Maybe. One, maybe what, what does Eleanor Roosevelt think about this? What does Mahatma Gandhi think about the this? The weirdest is when you get killed and then all of a sudden it's like one death is a tragedy. A million deaths is a statistic. <laughs> Joseph Stalin. You're like, what is this supposed to be telling me right now? Am I now? supposed to learn from Stalin in this yeah, situation yeah. while dead? Am I a Russian? I don't <laughs> want to say too much because okay. I don't know which uh, uh, yeah. related thing is on your list, but there is another level from Call of Duty. It's that not I, from Call of Duty. 
So the one that it was, it was uh, the Battle of Stalingrad. Yes, where you start off. It's very similar to the scene from Enemy at the Gates. Yes, yes. Where yes. you, as a soldier in the war, get uh, you're walking through. They're just like handing out guns and ammunition to like different people. Just like here's a gun, here's ammunition. Yeah. You only have ammunition, no gun, and you're yeah. just kind of running through. You try to meet up with someone. You get to a point where where it's very clear you guys are losing the battle. So your friends start running back and the Russians start shooting their own people yes. being like, no, keep going forward. Called the man. People don't remember if they never played the original Call of Duty, how different that franchise was in the in the first and second Call of Duty, maybe even the third. I know yeah, how much better it would get too with advanced warfare and things like that where I'm oh, in space. And, so you know, much better. So much better. Give me like it's funny because it sounds like I, I know a lot of people who love Call of Duty uh, right now would think that I'm joking about that. But like, no, I, the original Call of Duty, in my opinion, was 20 times better than the calls oh. of duty we get now. <laughs> yeah, no, I'm sorry. I'm also joking. Yes. I've been to Stalingrad, by the way. Oh, really? It's called Novgorod now. Oh, um, okay. So that's Novgorod. Was that Novgorod? Hey, listen. <laughs> oh, it's Naughty Dog Rad. Naughty Dog. Yeah, Rad. yeah. Okay, that's okay. where they make all the. Games. So everywhere you go, you can see like little uh, glowing handholds where you can kind of climb things. <laughs> yes, it's very empty, cinematic. Empty drawers for yes. like scissors and <laughs> twine. Um, okay, so that's your number ten. Yes. My number ten is going to be uh, very similar to yours. Incredibly, incredibly okay. similar. Very violent. Uh, has has imagery that is you know just burned into your brain, uh -huh. right? Um, I think noises. I know what it is, and I hope this is where you're going. It's World One One from Super Mario Brothers. Oh Jesus Christ! So <laughs> I, it's it's always it's just, I hate you so much because <laughs> you said you had one that was similar on my list, and I thought that's where you were going right I, now. I will say it's coming up. This is just not this one. Okay, but it is similar in those ways. Okay, okay. listen to what I just said. Th those were correct. It's very the it image, the design of the, the level did. is very good. Yeah, this is maybe the level I have played the most in my life of yeah. any video game. Yeah. And I think there is something about that where I think it is the perfect uh, crystallization of what Mario is. A very catchy beat, bright colors with yep. like beautifully designed characters that you're kind of always looking at. You're like, why is everyone so happy? Yeah. This is crazy. I'm sure. going to kill these people. Sure. Um, and it's just simple mechanics that work really well. And while this game, while this level itself is not difficult at all, it's meant to like in instruct you to what the game is in yes. general. I just, I kind of can't break down that this is in my head what Mario is and it's the level I played the most. Can I... Man, okay. I don't want to tip my hand too much. Yeah, please don't. Can I just ask you the or your hand? I don't want to tip your hand either. Okay, yeah. I don't I hate tipping hands. Cows, great. Ca love hilarious. It. Fun. Yes. Farmers love it. Yeah. <laughs> Cows <laughs> love it. Do you think they all then the farmers have to go like put them back up right and they all gotta like basically. Uh, do they really? They have to like have machinery to like bring like them a, back a up. Because cows, cows can't do it themselves. Cow can't do. <laughs> cow can't do. White man can't jump. Cow can't do. <laughs> um do you have another Mario game? Yes. No. No. So, okay. We'll I tried to only choose one a franchise. I, I understand that. Yes. Uh, Andrew, I understand. <laughs> when we get to my- Don't Watch yourself, Gansler. Uh, a certain point on my list, mm -hmm. I want to have a conversation about why you chose that one specifically. Sure. Because, yeah. yeah. Oh, I'd love to. Absolutely. Okay. We don't need to overthink it. It is so simple, but that's kind of its beauty. And I think that's what is great about Mario games in general. Okay. Yeah. Perfect. I love that, that is choice. my number 10. Love that choice. Uh, my number nine is one. I don't know that you would have gotten to this point in this game. Mm. This one is is uh, uh, ensconced in oh. a, a, a larger game, which I think has actual more enjoyable levels. Okay. But specifically, this part of the game made me feel for the first time like I was good at video games. Oh, interesting. There is notoriously a level in Banjo-Kazooie. Oh. It's called Rusty Bucket Bay. Okay. And a lot of people know it to be the most challenging portion of the game. It's a it's an accumulation of the skills that you've learned up to that point. It's unforgiving. There's platforming. There's timed elements. There's a specific jiggy, which as often as I say Jiggy, it feels like a slur. Yeah, Every I time like I say it. it. I don't like it. I don't want to say yeah. it anymore. There's a lot of a ban uh, Banjo Kazooie where you're like, huh. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Mumbo, we're, we're good, right? Mumbo Jumbo talking. Yeah, like, yeah. Well, well, you yeah. almost want to like present it to the UN and go like, I need everyone's <laughs> approval on this. <laughs> All right, all right. Okay, all right, good. The yeah, UN's like, like, it's a bear and a and a bird. <laughs> bird. Shut the fuck up. I think this says more about you, you. and you're pointing at me. And I'm like, uh, uh no, wait, wait. And I'm trying to do the right thing. Uh, Pass around a man cast controller. Yeah. Uh, oh, don't yeah, do that. No. Don't do that. That would cause World War Three <laughs> uh, or World War One. speaking of my pick number nine. Uh, yeah, there was a, a specific uh, jiggy ugh, that yeah. you have to get, and it was uh, 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 a propeller mission, it was called. And it was basically like, you'd have to do this incredibly difficult platforming bit, stomp a button, which would start a timer because it would stop the propeller 
propellers at the back of a boat. You'd have to make your way back out through the difficult platforming, jump off the boat, swim through the stopped propeller and get the jiggy, which is stuck mm-hmm. in behind us. Now, I heard about this level yeah. before I ever actually played it because I was at the video game store and all the people in there were talking about how annoying that level was, how they were never able to beat it, how they turned off their their systems, how they threw their controllers. I beat that level on my first try Whoa. and it was legitimately one of the coolest I've felt. It's not a humble brag. This is a flat out brag. <laughs> it's a confident is, brag. This is a com- very confident brag. <laughs> Come at me, Banjo. Uh, uh, yeah. And, and I, I remember that moment just being like, I might actually be good at video games. Right. Yeah. And, and it just, I think about that specific mission within that greater world, but like we played Banjo Kazooie. Yeah. yeah. It isn't the most beautifully designed level. No, unfortunately, Mumbo's Mountain might have been cooler, but uh, to to pick. But because of the 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 achievable difficulty, giving me an experience that none of the other levels did, I thought this one kind of stood out a little bit more. Oh, I love that. that I think that's that's a great choice. You know, Banjo Kazooie was a really cool game to go back yes. and play. Oh, fucking and, so uh, good. Still so good. So good. So good. All right. So that's your number nine, Banjo Kazooie. My number nine is gonna be Chapter Eleven, Hidden in Plain Sight from Uncharted Four. Oh, great. So I really wanted to choose something from this game, and even though I know among like real Uncharted fans. Among Thieves. Uh, among Thieves, which is that's what they're called. Among the Thieves of the Uncharted <laughs> franchise. They, 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 I would say Uncharted 4, while gets good reviews, yes. I think it's a little mixed among true fans. Yep. I really enjoyed the game because I thought the storytelling was really, really good. There are some levels that straight up suck. Yeah. Like there's just kind of no way around it. Like every Uncharted game. I would say so. There's a ton of levels. Yeah. They, some are going to blow. Yeah. Uh, chapter 11, Hidden in Plain Sight, is the best encapsulation of what makes Uncharted great. Yeah. There, it's just... It is, there are puzzles, there are exploration, exploration, excuse me. Little, explorations? Yeah, explorations. Uh, uh, explorations there, make every level better. <laughs> talk to on phonics. There's, uh, <laughs> there's a little bit of violence, but not too much that doesn't ruin the gameplay in general. It also has some really good storytelling. You have to acc- accrue all this evidence and, and find all these numbers. And so by the end, you figure it out. And what makes Uncharted so much fun is you sit there and go, oh my God, I did it. I'm the smartest person yes. in the world. Yeah. I could only be the only person that figured this out. Clearly no one else could have no, figured that out. No, of course not yeah. millions of people yeah. all across the world. And that's what makes you feel really good. You feel like you achieved something. You feel like you accomplished something while also not losing the storytelling and wit that comes with the Uncharted yeah. games. Yeah. I Which, just think it's a really- There's a ton of it. You yeah. know what? There's similar things in like Portal. I think mm, yeah. where there's this feeling of a you're struggling to figure things out when you do you feel like you're the only person who ever could have gotten to it or the solution was so tough to find out that you think you broke the game to yeah, get it yeah. uh, in B while it's happening there is some funny writing or some interesting writing some engaging writing that's going on similar to to Uncharted yeah. I, I think that's a great pick because difficulty isn't a bad thing if it's done correctly. Uh, and I, I feel like Uncharted does often a good, with the exception of combat, I yes. think Uncharted does a good job. It, that. It's supposed to be a reward mechanism. Yeah. You're supposed to get that little dopamine when you go, oh, I figured something out. Oh, yeah. here we go. And if you didn't have the wit of like a portal or an Uncharted yeah. of like a character that's kind of little meta, a little breaking stuff, and it was just a propulsive soundtrack behind it, that would get so annoying so I, fast. I agree. And you'd just be like, oh, fuck, I don't, I don't know. Yep. But if he's making little comments, you're talking to people and stuff, you're like, okay, there's stuff to get through there. So yeah, yeah chapter 11, Hidden in Plain Sight from Uncharted 4. Was, your, was, was 4 your favorite of the series? You know, it's funny. I think that might be recency bias, but I would say yes. Yeah. And I know that goes against a lot of other people's opinions. No, I know a lot of people who love it. And and I think I think it's less about recency bias and more about sometimes you give credit to the last of a thing yeah. being the best or close to the best because it handles it well. Right. Like, was the last season of Better Call Saul the best? I mean, like, probably. But also, yeah. it just did a really good job handling the ending, which is a burden that is not experienced by any of the prior seasons. Totally. And, uh, and well, I think... Unt- how about this for recency bias? Is Ooh. Better Call Saul better than Breaking Bad? Because that is a real debate. And then you're kind of like, wait, is it only because I just saw Better Call that, Saul? That's a good question. You know, I do. I think it is. I do too. Because oh, really you do? I, I do. do I do. I think it does. Anytime you can have such an engaging story without a hook. Yeah. Like what is the hook of Better Call Saul? A, a, a human's descent into scumminess. Right. As, as opposed to a a, a <laughs> uh, middle school teacher who turns into a drug dealer, which is yes. like, I could convince anyone to watch that fucking show. Yeah, exactly. But yeah. here's the, the, the comeuppance of a lawyer. Like, yes. uh, it sounds like Shakespeare. I'm not interested. God, Thanks, so nerd. Yeah, it's even like, even try to t- get people to watch Mad Men sometimes. I'm yeah. Like, you know, it's, going to go down is probably the best writing of the 20th century like yeah. on TV and people are like what is it about I'm like it's like an ad firm and it's like a really <laughs> everyone's an asshole and you're like yeah, yeah no okay. thanks no <laughs> like, thanks. yeah what happens well, nothing really yeah. um yep 
<laughs> like, that's well, it. speaking of great writing, we're going to be talking about, uh, if it's not all right, uh, out already, uh, the finales of it'll, yeah, actually the episode will be out already. Yeah. Uh, go check out our uh, Patreon, patreon.com slash great podcast because we talk about Barry and Succession. Those yes. two shows, two of the greatest shows of the modern television era ended on the same night, series finales. Yeah. Uh, and we and we break that all down for you. So and what else out. we're watching so that we don't bombard this video game podcast yes. with all the things we're watching. That's like, true. Like if you want to hear what I thought about the winner of Survivor, tune into our Patreon. <laughs> I can't wait because I will definitely tell you. I will get a glass of water while you talk <laughs> yeah, to the yeah, camera. I'm just, going to, I'm just gonna take a whiz. You want to yeah. just do this? I'm like, yeah, I can crank this out in two minutes. All right, hundred percent. I uh, okay. So I'm gonna go with my number eight. This is one that I wonder if it's on your list again. Open world, kind of hard to define it as a level, but side missions being levels. Yes, I am going to call this one a level. Uh, one of the most interesting experiences I've had Ooh, in games, okay. especially in games that encourage resource accumulation. Yeah, uh, uh, adding a finite element to this, not only in terms of resource, but in terms of story yeah. and adding morality to killing Ooh. things. Uh, as I kind of tip my hand, uh, the title actually, I don't know. I wonder if you can guess it based on the title. Uh, Birth of the Conservation Movement. It, it's Red Den? Yes. Uh, is Oh, I know what this is. Uh, is this the fishing guy? The the guy no. that's alone by the cabin? Damn it. No, it, it, is, it, is, uh, it is in Undead Nightmare. The original Red Dead oh. is the side mission where you have to hunt the Sasquatch. Oh, I love this level. Tragic. I love you, this. You, you start off where Undead Nightmare, obviously, Should just a fantastic that. DLC. Yes. Uh, and, uh, you know, going way above and beyond for, for way DLC. Above and, beyond. and there's a mission within it, a side mission unrelated to the, the main objective of that DLC. And it's essentially one person who says, I think I found Sasquatch. You've got to go hunt it. I think maybe for like research purposes mm -hmm. or, or it's terrorizing the village or whatever, whatever, something like that. You kill the first one. He says, okay, here are a bunch more. There's like four more. Yeah. You hunt them down at various parts of the map and when you get to the last one it's the sasquatch is just sitting at a tree yeah. and he speaks to you and he says go ahead and do it you've already killed the rest of my family oh, yeah. i have no reason left to live yes. and you're like wait you talk and he's like have you ever tried speaking to us it's like well no because you guys terrorize the family he's like i'm a vegetarian you wouldn't know that because you just shot us every time you saw us and you're like fuck fuck like the opposite of a bioshock where it's like uh uh or i guess the same as a bioshock where it's like i'm just doing this because people are telling me to i'm not actually questioning the morality totally. of what i'm doing yeah, I, I I love this level. I, yeah. I I'm so glad that you're you uh you you brought it up. And then that also comes back in Red Dead Two. Oh yeah, where you could talk to him like in a cave. Yes, yes. And, you, and you're like, oh, is that the a, a little Easter egg? Yeah, because yeah. a lot of people weren't sure. I'm not sure if they've fleshed that out since I played Red no. Dead Two. But yeah, and unfortunately, Rockstar is just making like billions and millions of dollars on online stuff, so they'll never give us DLC ever yes. again. Yeah. That's too bad. It's a little little bit of a shame. It, I will it, say, because that was like, that has got to be one of the most elaborate DLCs like of all time. It like, is it's crazy. It, and it, we do have a plan to talk about our favorite DLC of all time yeah. at some point on this podcast. And I would not be surprised if that shows up on both of our lists. No, I would not. That's a great choice, Mikey. Uh, all right, that's your number eight. My mm. number eight is going to be from... Tony Hawk 4, it's going to be Alcatraz. Oh, hell yeah. So Alcatraz works for so many reasons. More it, than the warehouse. More than the warehouse. Wow. Okay. I think the warehouse is the most iconic. Yeah. Because okay. that goes okay. into the yeah. one-to-one, yes. the world, uh, the Super Mario ones. Like, I I play that. Sure. I, I could do that blindfolded yeah. at this point. Yeah. Uh, I will turn on Tony Hawk now with the remake just to turn on that, just to play the warehouse. Yeah. And hear, like, Superman by Goldfinger, you know? <laughs> um, is that the the Alcatraz covers two different things because I think it's one of the best levels in the Tony Hawk, excuse me, Tony Hawk franchise. I got a really emotional there. Uh, because <laughs> what are you thinking about your your uncle who died in Alcatraz? Yeah. Or, my, well, they don't, they just didn't find him after he escaped. Yeah, yeah. Well, we don't, don't I haven't talked to him in uh, decades, so. Also, yeah. Tony Hawk being in Alcatraz gives way, brand new meaning to the Birdman of Alcatraz. Oh, that is really good. Yes. <laughs> I actually immediately, when you said your uncle, I'm like the Birdman, I didn't put it together. Even. That's amazing. <laughs> so not only is this a real place, it actually gives you a little bit of both. It's not flat yeah. and it's not a single run. So it gives you propulsion because there's speed going down, but you could work your way back up. So there's still height and there's still speed. Yeah. It's like the best combination of two things. Um, I just, I also, there's a fun story about it. There's kind of like fun with the tourists and you yep. walk around with them and you have a real chance to post really high scores. It is kind of what makes Tony Hawk great. It's funny. I always hated that level. Yeah. And I remember a specific moment, you and I at an arcade bar in Toronto yeah. uh, before they were cool. And we went there. We had a memory card that yes, we, we that brought, we brought a PS2 memory card. Yeah. Every time we would go to this bar and we would continue our save progress yes. in Tony Hawk. And you and I going back and forth playing horse and everything was pretty even. Yes. Up until 
Alcatraz and you just fucking dominated me. And I, I, yeah. I, it was, it was a lot of momentum. The momentum thing is what killed me. The yeah. downhill and then trying to get back uphill. I couldn't get into a rhythm. Right. And uh, I, I just, it frustrated me, but I think it's elaborate and I think it's incredibly well designed. I, yeah, I'm, I'm right there with you. I think it's kind of what makes those games great because it's a big map. Yeah. It's not the warehouse where it's this tiny map and in its, in its simplicity is very beautiful. Yeah. But it, it gives you the opportunity to be creative, which really is the fun part of those games. Do you remember in Tony Hawk? I think it was Tony Hawk four maybe or two after one because one had the warehouse right yeah and then warehouse shows up again in another game and it's just the warehouse but then it opens up because you can jump through the glass yeah that moment was just brilliant game design 100 percent. i think that is also four because uh, i'd have to check oh that might be it might be it might three. be okay because it's in the remake yes and that's when the levels could open up and there'd yes. be two stages yeah. of them yeah which is great it's good and bad kind of thing like area 51 is a big one for sure, that one sure. too so yeah it's uh i really yeah that's what so alcatraz yeah. is number eight for I me like from tony hawk pro skater 4 i love it number seven uh is another level after because uh, we did uh operation overlord from uh, my number 10 on mm. the podcast this one we also did on the podcast it isn't the most fun level i've ever played oh, but in terms of imagination design and what it represents this is one of the most iconic moments that i've had playing a game it's from psychonauts the oh. milkman conspiracies the specific level that we wanted to make sure we did on the podcast essentially you jump into the head of this person and you're unraveling this mystery in this kind of like norman rockwell-esque uh, 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 neighborhood, like suburb that's kind of been torn apart. And there's this one house that's, that's, uh, riddled with like conspiracy yes. theories. And there's, you know, men in black coats who are coming after you and security cameras everywhere. And because this is psychonauts, it's working on multiple levels. You are in the head of a, uh, someone who is incredibly paranoid and you're trying to unravel the mystery in their head, but their head is represented and and entangled in mysteries because that's just the representation of that person's actual life. And unraveling that mystery was fun on its face. The comedy was great. The combat in Psychonauts and, and the traversal was always fun. Um, the ultimately unraveling in my own mind what everything represented in that level and how it related to the untangling of the mess of this real human being yeah. I mean, quote unquote real, real human, human being, being yeah. uh was was just so fun of an experience it, it it's it it was uh, psychologically i think a very interesting thing because i'd never experienced something like that in games yeah. and i was just i was in for for every beat of that i you know it's so funny this 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 level comes up a lot when yeah. you start mentioning the best levels. Yeah. So I'm really glad you're bringing it up because even though I didn't play Psychonauts growing up, yeah. playing it on the podcast, this level it was stands cool out so much where you're like, holy shit, this is a really smart idea. Yes. It yeah. really is just such a great It was a ton telling. of fun. A ton oh, of fun. Man. So that's a, that's a great choice at number seven. Uh, my number seven is going to be also a game that we played on the podcast. Mm. Um, it's going to be GoldenEye 007, The Archives. Oh, the Archives. The Archives okay. is what I chose because I remember so clearly, it's just because of the sheer volume of enemies and fun shooting. It yeah. kind of opens it up a little bit yep. in that way. And it just, it felt like a real building with like dead ends. Yep. And it like actually felt challenging. Yeah. And, uh, and made you feel like James Bond. And, you know, there's a real theme that's running among them. But like, among all my picks, excuse me. But The Archives was the one that stood out. Archives was great. It was... I that that one isn't my favorite oh, from the list, and I don't know if I want to talk about my favorite because I don't know. Maybe it'll show up oh, later on my list. I don't will. know, but I do love archives. Yes. I loved the almost rat race that you could find yourself yes. in with like twenty enemies coming at you. Uh, it starts where you're basically behind enemy lines, as you often are as yes, James Bond. So. But you're you're in the middle of some shit, yeah. And you know you gotta you're fight your way shit. out of it. You're in you're right in the shit, and it stinks there. It's smelly. And I don't I don't listen. We're I, unless we're talking to a bunch of listeners that are also dung beetles. Yeah. I don't think our listeners are gonna like no, being in the shit. No, they like they like showers. They do, well, I don't know about that. Andrew. Okay, they they you should get you should look into showers. You should and just like every so often, yeah. Just a little bit more than you are. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You can't overdo it until you do. And then you very much overdo it. And then yeah. you then you're, might be in Psychonauts or something like that at that point. You're talking to someone who has two to three showers a day. So <laughs> if you have three showers a day, how are you not looking in the mirror going like, this is not normal. Well, because I have to make up for all of our listeners who don't have them. <laughs> yeah. I'm trying to balance the scales out like Lady Justice herself. Yes, exactly. Um, Archives is a great pick. Thank love you. It. There's not too much uh, 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 that you can say that people haven't already said about Goldeneye, uh, but I love it for, for so many fucking reasons. This is for the single player. 
If, yes. If I was choosing something for the multiplayer, maybe we'll talk about that later. Okay. Oh, maybe we'll talk about it. I'm excited, Andrew. Oh, I'll titillated there. So that's my number seven. What is your number six? My number six may be a little bit of an unorthodox pick, but I could I had to represent this one because I was obsessed with what it was when I was a kid. It was from a fighting game. Oh. And it was the spike pit from Mortal Kombat. Smart call. Now love I it. sucked as a kid at fighting games, but I loved Mortal Kombat nothing because changed. it it I, nothing has changed. No, nothing nothing has, changed. has changed except no. Bushido Blade. Yeah, you did. You beat me in Bushido. Blade. I'm not happy with it. <laughs> um, because uh, uh, I I was pretty shit at fatalities. I you know I didn't know how to take Scorpion's mask yeah. off and blow fire at people or rip people in half as Jax or or you know what any any number of things <laughs> punch people in the balls as Johnny Cage. Yeah, uh, but I you know what I did know what? was how to uppercut people. And that's all you had to do in, in the spike stage. You uppercut them, they fall down the spikes, and they land in and among their peers of everyone else who's landed in the spikes. It's fantastic. It's unbelievable. So satisfying. In that, like, just the idea of of fighting over a spike pit. I remember like the the landing in in my in my childhood home, uh, which I bought for my parents. Uh, <laughs> I remember like having my stuffed animals and like uppercutting them off the staircase and like and like looking down and like yeah. seeing them land and be like, "That's the spike pit." Like I would embody <laughs> that that feeling in my life, um, pushing people off the monkey bars, throwing yeah. glass shards at yeah. them, torturing small dogs, yeah, and bigger ones too. And once bigger. I got good at it, yeah, yeah. Like, the small <laughs> ones were no challenge. Yeah, you evolved up. That that was good. Good for you. <laughs> I, it's a great one. It's so iconic. Yeah. You know, I, not all the things on my list are iconic. Yeah. That is an iconic where you show a still to any video game fan. And you're like, oh, yeah. They know exactly. Oh, what you're talking yeah. About. You get one of those responses. Like, oh, I've been there. You know, yeah. so uh, that's a great choice, mm -hmm. especially for a fighting game to represent, too, which is not naturally on any of our lists. Yes. Yeah. Uh, so that's your number six, right? Yes. My number six is going to be the war game that we were talking about earlier. Ooh. It is going to be Medal of Honor Frontline's D-Day Invasion. This is this is what I was hoping you would choose because yes. it was between that and Call of Duty for me. They're the same thing in a way. They're yeah. both the Battle of Normandy yeah. uh, as the Allies are storming the beaches. Uh, in Obviously, in your game, in the Call of Duty game, you're a paratrooper that's going to be going behind enemy lines. Yeah. And in the D-Day Invasion, you are in the boats yes. as you're running onto the beach. And so if you ever wanted to play Saving Private Ryan the video game, this is it. If, that's what it, it felt is, like harrowing it is nauseating at times yeah, yeah. like it, the camera's moving so much that you feel like you're gonna throw up yeah uh it is terrifying and it is so funny to do that you know not that i need to be the first one to point this out but like it is terrifying in the way that like this is based on a real thing that happened to real people imagine <laughs> like it's just so i remember playing paintball once and being fucking petrified and i'm yeah. like man if this were real i would be so bad at war Oh, I don't, yeah, but like, also I don't want to be good at war. Being good at wars also seems to present its own set of issues. Um, I'd love to be good at war. Really? Call me up. The Blackwater's pay, paying oh. a lot these days. Yes. Yeah, yeah, you, you should, yeah, you should be a merc. I, I would, uh, Mercenaries yeah. uh, was a great video game. Mm, I was good at that game. There you go. Didn't scare me as much as Medal of Honor. Yeah. Uh, they they should have just put on the, on this, on the box here. Medal of Honor front lines. It's just like being there. It's true. It's just like and you're like there. Yeah. And you're like, oh my God. It's it's so scary. So yeah, I wanted to represent this one because it is just such a thing where you kind of put the controller down, you're like, oh my God. Yeah. It, so. And it is, you know, you talk about something that's iconic versus uh, you know, maybe meaning as much to you individually. And, right. and you know, saving private Ryan, that scene was 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 capital I iconic. Oh, oh, it was oh, oh, so oh. famous. Uh, and this moment in the game, this was like what they used to sell the game. Yeah. They would like show clips of it and be like, you get to do this in this game. <laughs> you get to. Yeah, yeah. There's grandpas just crying. Yeah, all like, I was me. forced <laughs> to do it. I didn't want to go. I, I didn't enjoy that at all. Yeah. Uh, uh, yeah. So I, I that, that was a very harrowing moment. Similar uh, reasons to like it for the reasons that I had for Call of Duty as 100%. well. You know, absolutely. The feeling that even when you succeed, you haven't really done anything. You just survived oh, war. Yeah. Am I right? Am, I, I don't know. Are you? I've never done it. I don't think I am. I don't know. And I think that's what makes it beautiful, to be honest. How many, yes. what would your KD ratio be in war? One to one. I think I would just like try and get one life if I'm going to go out. Got him. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> just like punch him with a grenade or something like that. <laughs> at what point have you racked up your at like, you get like the 20, 20 kill streak? Whoa. If I'm like the Red Baron, I'm like, you know what? If I die, they're going to like make a statue of me. Like, so it's all good. It's like that Finnish woman sniper or something like that. Yeah, like yeah, once yeah, you get yeah, to yeah, that yeah. level, you're like, well, everyone's going to know me. Everyone's going to know me. Yeah, they're going to be so. so happy when I'm dead. I mean, they are for me for different reasons. But, yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> my, uh, uh, my number five, another thing that we played. What are you laughing at? I was just thinking like, it's just so funny. We were like, do you remember Mikey killed 14 people in war? <laughs> and you're like, yeah, I thought he would have done it for our side. I didn't see him switching, but 
It's pretty easy to do when you unload the grenade in the boat over <laughs> yes, to Normandy. I was gonna say, it's you and a Jeep rowing over like, never saw it coming, did you? And you un 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 unclink a grenade. And, there, and, and everyone else in Russia, I guess, or something like that yeah. is like, whoa, what a patriot. <laughs> Build a statue, just not on the country you think. <laughs> Stalin's like, one death is a tragedy. 14 deaths is confusing? <laughs> or the the idea that you don't actually switch sides. You just make a mistake and kill a bunch of people. And they're like, what a hero. We love that guy. It's like, damn it. I Mr. My Goon my way into the Russian history books. <laughs> oh, Fucking God, that's hell. funny. Uh, my number three is one that another one that we did on this podcast, uh, very subjective to me, because I'm sure if you look at this franchise, some people will have more iconic levels, but I think about levels that I've played and the more that we get up, up this list, it's levels that I played countless times uh -huh. for my own pleasure. Don't yuck on my, I, I, oh. I don't like the, like the complete yin and yang of that. And like, don't <laughs> yuck on my yums. I'm like, you know, that's yucky. I don't like that. <laughs> So, yes, yeah. uh, don't yin on my yang. Yeah, <laughs> uh, uh, it's the first level from Contra 3, the Alien Wars. Oh, cool. Uh, you think about co-op and games. That was big couch co-op around the time on the Super Nintendo. That was always important. I love the fact that you could get into a vehicle at points. Yeah. Someone could take the high ground. Someone could take the low ground. If you're Anakin, you're on the low ground. Right. Obi Wan's on the high ground. And everyone knows in Star Wars, the high ground <laughs> is very important. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, uh, but it was, it was, it was, there was explosions and, and guns and fire. And, and my brother and I got so good at that level that we knew when to pose when fireballs were going over yeah. and they were like, it just became this moment where you were playing it the same way you would watch like a really good action scene in a movie. It was, it was as though you were watching it happen and you weren't even controlling it at that yeah, point. Yeah. But man, I fucking loved it. Contra through the Alien Wars, the street scene, the first level, and I honestly could have picked any level from that game. And so funny, another one that we did on the podcast. Yeah. I just, I that game is just, you know, talk about capital I iconic. Like it just almost, it also describes a subgenre by yeah. by playing that one level. Yeah, where yeah, you're yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Oh, this is this is the this is the that game type right? of game. Like, come yes, on, yeah, exactly. I, it's it's so great. It's still so good, and it's so simple. It's so much fun. Hundred percent. Oh, I love that. That's your that's your number five. That's huh? my number five. Okay, my number five. It's gonna be the winter section. This is okay. This is a little bit of a loose area. The winter section from The Last of Us. This is Joel is now okay. hurt. If you've seen the TV show, this is almost straight from the, the right from the game. Yeah. Uh, Joel is hurt. And for the first time in the game, you play as Ellie. Yes. Alone. Yes. And it really, at this point, opens up The Last of Us to create The Last of Us 2, to create the rest of The Last of Us in general, because you're no longer playing as Joel. You get to play as Ellie and you have a completely different fighting style. You know, it's it removes all your dependency from Joel. For and, sure. it, and playing as Ellie is entirely different dynamic because you can't just rely on the brute force yes. of Joel. Yes. Right? You have to start thinking about it differently. And it just it's special mention to the first part of that level, like right after you kill the deer, because it is downright like intense. Yeah. It is intense because it is scary. It's scary not because of zombies gonna rip off your face and all that kind of stuff and all the disgusting, you know, kill scenes that you get. It's scary because there are humans hunting you and they have the upper hand. Yeah. You no longer have your heavy anymore. Yeah. And I just love it because it it there is storytelling for storytelling's sake, and then you play a game. And sometimes those two things are separate. Yeah. And what I really love about The Last of Us is the storytelling is in the gameplay. Yes. And you don't need to, they don't need to tell you, you should be scared. Yeah. You are scared because yeah. Ellie is scared and you as the player are right there with you. And I just think it's an awesome part of the game. You can't press certain buttons for certain types of yes. attacks anymore. You've, right. you've been limited in your ability and capabilities of dealing with the situation that you're in. The situation is the same as what you've had before, but there was this weird loneliness yeah. and helplessness that you felt. And it does inform future Ellie because the her fighting style in the second game is much more sneaky. Yes. And and I and I like that about it because you get your first glimpse of it here. You're like, I can't use, I can't swing a club at this dude because I'm I'm a little kid at right. this point. And and it kind of informs, you know, using tools to your disposal mm -hmm. a little bit better. Love that. Love the the last of us. I remember playing that area and at first just being like, well, fuck this game. I don't want to play not as Joel. Like, why would you make me do that? I don't want to play as a little girl. This yeah. is dumb. Yeah, yeah. Like, I I, I want to play as Joel. He's yeah. my dad. I know. Yeah. Like the big, you know, the way that he plays is like, it's not only that he is your like fake parental figure. Yeah. He plays like a person that would make you feel secure. Yes. Yes. And when you lose him and he's weak for the first time ever. Yeah. It's kind of like when the first time you ever saw your father fail at something, you're uh -huh. like, wait, what the hell's going on here? Like, you're not good at baseball. I didn't know that. You know, the um, first time I saw my dad fail. What's that? Was when we had our first fist fight. Really? Yeah. I knocked the shit out of that. How old guy. were you? I fuck it. I was, uh, 
Uh, 33 and a half. Yeah. Yeah. And you're just like, put up the dude six months man. ago. I'm going to kick the shit out of you. <laughs> yeah. He's like, what? He's, He's like, sitting down watching Survivor. Sandwich. He's yeah. like, I can't wait to talk to Andrew about the winner of Survivor. <laughs> yeah. I got to get my house pants on. He's just, you know, he's all comfy. <laughs> and then you just beat the shit out of him. Well, while he was putting on the house pants. Yeah. 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 He's yeah. like, he, the whole time, I don't want to do this. I don't want to do this. And you're like, tap old man. He's like, tap. You're like, tap. You're like, just beating the hell out of him. Yeah. I, uh, I, I really just think it's, you know, we're in such a great time with modern uh, video games. Yeah. And Last of Us is really at the front of that with just the storytelling. And I just, I really just think it's a special, special part of the game. So, yep. you know. I agree. It, I agree. Yeah. I love that one. So that was your number five. That is my number five. My number four. And I'm now thinking we may have more than three of uh, 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 selections from this game showing up. Whoa. Or, 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 or more than two, sorry. Potentially three. Okay. Uh, from GoldenEye. Oh. But a different level. Not the archives. It's Facility. Yeah. Facility to me was the level that I played Fair. Over and over again, partially because I wanted to get that invincible cheat. Yeah. Partially because I loved starting out in the event, shooting the guy's hat off like we all did. Yeah. Being in the men's room, seeing if I could see that poly polygonal dick on the guy at yeah. the urinal. Want to see that? He dick? never let me see it. Yeah. I wanted to yuck on that yuck. <laughs> yeah. He wouldn't let me. Um, uh, making your way through the mines, the bigger guns, the sense of exploration, the stealth, all that stuff. Seeing how long you go before anyone even knows you're in there. What a great fucking feeling. Uh, in and uh, early enough on that it wasn't incredibly difficult. I knew that level like the back of my hand and I know the back of my hand pretty freaking well. Yeah, I, I agree with you. Back of your hand is really disgusting. So you remember <laughs> it. The second you see it, it's burned into your memory. I, I have to. I have to look because I'm like, that mole's new. That piece of dirt's been there three weeks. I yeah. should wash this soon. Yeah, yeah. In the same conversation, you talk about showering three times a day. <laughs> uh, no, a great choice. Great choice. I don't have Goldeneye any on my list. Oh, you forward. don't? Do you? No, I don't. Okay, so let's talk about the, the multiplayer. Okay, yes. complex. Yeah, yes. let's talk complex. I, I couldn't describe it as a level in my mind because sure. it is multiplayer. Yeah. It's the same way of going like Fortnite, the island. You're like, True. well, I don't Although know. Although I did, I chose the spike pit for Mortal Kombat. That's a good point. Yeah. I just didn't, I, if I was, I had to choose, I didn't feel comfortable doing I, it. I, even I, though, I, I get, I get what you're saying. Even though if you had said GoldenEye, choose a level on that complex. Like in my head, it's just, I, I made the same, the same yeah. reaction. So okay. I get, I get where you're coming from, but complex, man, I could spend hours there. Uh, just, yeah. just, just sitting comfortable with my proximity minds. Yeah. Throwing them all over the place. And by the way, if you want to see Andrew and I relearning all of the ins and outs of complex, uh, we got super drunk and played GoldenEye and that's over on our YouTube channel got and it's a smoked. ton of fun. Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah, wait, no. Uh, uh, go find out how I got smoked. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, uh, I don't know that we want to make the announcement yet, but uh, okay. somebody who is involved in the history of GoldenEye oh, yeah, right. uh, will be joining this podcast pretty soon and I'm very excited for that interview. Yeah, that's yeah. really exciting. So yeah. yeah, that's coming up soon, but yeah. Uh, uh, sorry, Facility. Great choice. Facility, great thank choice. you very much. Number four. Yes. For me, is going to be from GTA 4. It's going to be the Four Leaf Clover. The Four Ooh. Leaf Clover is the bank heist. Yes. And it's just, this is, it's just I made the joke earlier about Saving Private Ryan. This is Heat, the video game. Yeah. You find your crew, you over a couple of missions, assemble people, you know, get to, get the, uh, excuse me, the secured uh, armed v uh, vehicle, the bank thing. Uh, you you assemble your team, you get everything ready. Yeah. And then you actually get to execute an actual planned mission. Come on. Why aren't more video games like this? That's what I want to do. Well, you should play Payday 2, Andrew. I guess I should. <laughs> or Kane and Lynch. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Did you like Kane and Lynch? No. No. no I, mean, I didn't like any of those yeah. games. Okay. Um, but yeah, this one is fun because it takes what can be the over the top style of, of GTA games and kind of adds like a weird grounding to it and go yes. like, no, we're going to rob a bank and yeah. you're going to be, it's going to be hard to get away. You're like, yeah. cool. Yes. Okay. Was this, sorry, was this GTA four or GTA five? GTA five. Five. Sorry. Five. Yeah, I think you said four at first. Oh, did Cause I that's, that's the one with Nico Bellic in New York. This yes. is the one where you're as, uh, 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 was it Michael Madsen's character? It wasn't Michael yeah, well, Madsen. Yeah. Well, not Michael Madsen. I, uh, Oh God, it's been man? so long since I played that game. Yeah, and yet, oh, God, it's I'll still think it. incredibly popular. Yeah. yeah, it's still another yeah. one that we'll just never get a DLC yes. for. We're getting many, but they're all online. Um, yeah, it's just, it is so much fun of an execution yes. of a single level inside of this huge world. And to pick something very specific out of it is very tough sometimes. Yeah. But this has this like memorable, fun getaway and the whole thing. It's it great. was it, it, for, for a franchise as well, where I don't give a lot of credit to the gameplay. Sure. This was a lot of fun. This yeah. level was fun because what Rockstar is very good at is creating an exciting story around mm. what can be seen by some, not saying me, but by some as slightly played out gameplay. Yeah. Like the mechanics of shooting are not really fun in a GTA or a Red Dead game. But that isn't that almost isn't what matters yeah. in those. Yeah, yeah. And and I think that, that this is a good example of that where it's like you make the context good enough, 
Pokemon Snap co- corollary. Yes, 100%. Moving the camera and pressing a button isn't fun, but when you're moving it to things that you want to see and pressing a button, that is fun. So true. So yeah. true. I love heat too. So like, I just, this was like the greatest like combination of yes. things. So yeah. much fun. It's a, it's a playable style. Like if the con is, it's not a lot of fun to play sometimes with the controls. Yep. The positive has to be that they are very familiar and anyone can play it. That so, is very true. You know, like yeah. I remember my partner, my player one kind of like playing and going like, this is fucking awesome. Yeah. Like, yeah. It makes everyone feel powerful. Yeah. A hundred percent. So yeah, that's, that's going to be my number. What did I say? Four. Uh, that is your number four. That's my number four. There we go. My number three. Uh, this is, I don't know if you're going to hate me for picking this one because there are a lot of levels from this game I could have picked, but this is, I am going to consider it a level because it's your first experience in the game. And technically there is an objective. Your objective, get to the castle side mission. Have some fun while doing it. It's Mario 64. Oh, It's the garden area. It's the first area around the first time many of us ever controlled a video game in 3D. Um, uh, The the, akin to like as an adult taking mushrooms, this was like being a kid, like the way that it it opened up my brain to 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 understand what it felt like to move around in 3D space like that. Just unbelievable. Uh, uh, One of the most significant memories I have playing a video game and that whole garden area i don't even think there's any enemies really but you mm. can just kind of run around and do your own thing and yeah. in doing that really get a feel for what the future of video games would feel like yeah. quite literally which is so crazy to think about but it is actually yeah. true 100 percent. yeah that is such a oh man that is like burned into my brain yeah. running through the fields and stuff like that yeah. that is so good all right my number three we're going back to back rockstar pigs mm. uh red dead redemption 2 chapter 3 blood feuds ancient and modern oh this is the mission blood feuds ancient and modern uh it seemed to stand out from the rest of the missions for me you know if i had to think about one it would be this one specifically it's the assault on the brathwaite manor which, oh, which sure. used yeah, to yeah, be yeah, yeah. the slave plantation yeah. uh and it's a place that needs to be destroyed like cathartically uh so part of that it being a being a mission is that you know after a few cordial meetings arthur and the vanderling gang find out that the brathwaite's kidnapped jack which is john marson's son for stealing the brathwaite's horse and the combat sequence there is just one of the most like epics yes. that is very similar to old western movies you are standing on the balcony after taking the house killing off the Brathwaite's yeah. coming in to do it and yeah. you burn the house to the ground while walking through the house yes. and just murdering people. Yes. It you It is as close to feeling like a superhero that you can do while things are inflamed. Old like Southern history is going up and you're just like pissed off and 100%. killing people. It is, you feel so powerful. It is cinematic on the most epic scale between the, the views, like the vistas from the yep. top as you're shooting as people come in yep. and walking through the burning building. Uh, I just really love this mission. I think it, it shows off with the best parts of Red Dead. The the I remember the end of that mission when you're walking through the burning building and like cleaning up, just yeah. killing the rest of the people in there, wanting a button for like more violence. Yeah, like, yeah. let me hurt these people more. Yeah, I am though. I'm interested. I didn't expect you to pick this mission okay. from from Red Dead because I remember you saying how you you tried to fail it over and over again because you sided with what the Brythwites yeah. represented. Every time that the Confederate flag went up in flames, I'm like, yeah, I, yeah. I was like, where's the drop to knees button to cry? <laughs> yeah. We're <laughs> saluting with tears in eyes. Because everyone always talks about the moment in Red Dead Redemption 1 where you are, uh, 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 God, why can't I think it was not Arthur Morgan. John uh, Marston. John Marston. And uh, uh, and 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 the the barn opens up and the CIA shoots you down and everyone yeah. tried to replay or the FBI yeah, right the CIA. CIA Jesus Christ <laughs> Edgar Hoover's there <laughs> it's an automatic <laughs> uh everyone tried to like turn the game off and replay it to see if yeah. they could get past it and I remember you saying that about yeah this Braithwaite level and I just said like, they, they can't disrespect the stars and bars like that so yeah there's gotta be a way yeah, there's yeah. gotta be a way to make it through. with the South will rise again or some yes. horrible epitaph I said I changed a lot guys yeah. uh, it was a bad period of my life um but yeah it's it really is like if if for any instance you know it's so funny we're talking about i was talking about the, with you the other day about uh buster keaton yes and in one of his more famous movies the general there is this weird kind of thinking behind it that he is vouching for southern pride uh-huh. which even in the 20s was kind of an odd thing to do sure they're like well no that war just happened that's like you know whatever uh and i think it's it's funny if you fall yourself into this history and you aren't very clear about how your intentions are, there could be people that go on like, well, so, you know, maybe they feel like the the Confederacy, you know, should should have had more of a, I don't know, sympathetic view or something like sure. that. They make it very clear in this, this one. They're yes. like, hey, there's no, uh, there's, we're making this very clear right Especially now. even because Arthur Morgan, his own personal politics, and I remember this being a very interesting choice to have made in Red Dead, he's not immediately sympathetic to the plight of an African-American. Like no. he was, he was kind of just like, like he's friends with Lenny. Yeah. Uh, Lenny, right? Not Lenny, yeah. Lenny. Uh, but, but Lenny would say some things and he's just like, 
like God, I don't want to hear it. Like yeah, I'm not, yeah, I'm not, not for, my fight. Yeah, I don't yeah, want this not, thing. You know, he's got his own stuff to yeah, deal with. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I kind of like that because it creates a more like I don't know. I think that's a more realistic character. One hundred percent. Instead of some person that's like yeah. what and holds him by the hand, like I'm yes. so sorry of your yeah. plight. You then it I mean? seems cheesy. One hundred percent. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's yeah. much more if it's earned over time and experience that he sees what somebody else goes through and then goes, oh wow, that sucks. Which is why it was so confounding when just before that level that you mentioned, yes. uh, Brad Pitt from comes down from Canada yep. and says, I'm about to to save slavery, right. basically, yeah. is yeah. what he does. Yeah. Uh, from 12 years of slavery. Yeah, no, and then he's like, he's like, me and my friend Harriet are gonna do this. And, it, and, <laughs> and then she like pops out behind and winks and stuff like that. Hey, like, Tubby. Huh, yeah, yeah. Like, don't call me Tubby. Don't, don't call me Tubby. We're gonna go kill Michael Fassbender. What do you think? He's like, I'm in. <laughs> uh, uh, yeah, so that's number three. Uh, yeah. I like that. Yeah. I, I, uh, uh, that's that's a great choice. I'm glad Tubby. Red Dead Two. That's <laughs> Tubby. Harry Tubby. All, but you can call me Harry. All my friends call me Tubby. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Harry Tubbs. What's going on? <laughs> like I feel this is a very disrespectful to my history. Um, <laughs> Let's go with number two. Number two is uh, a le- maybe, honestly, maybe the level apart from my number one that I've played most in my okay. life. Potentially even including number one, having spent more time in this level. It's from one of my favorite shooters of all time, uh, Halo, the original Halo oh, on the Xbox. Yes. Covenant. No. Oh. It's it's number two. It's the level is just called Halo. Oh, oh okay. And oh. it's it's basically the first time, the reason why this one really stuck with me, maybe some people are calling it, uh, it's the second level yeah, in okay. Halo, right, but I right. think it's called technically Halo. Sure. And it, uh, uh, it opens up, there's a, a little bit of a crash landing, you make your way, blah, 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 uh, uh, take, take over uh, uh, kind of like an outpost sort okay. of thing. Yep. And then a Pelican drops down. I think that Pelican is like the larger ship and right. it drops a Warthog for you, which is the Jeep. Right. And you've got some Marines in the Jeep with you. Yeah. And you take a way out to like the open field. You drive this car and now all of a sudden there's like an overworld in a first person shooter where you can go left, you can go straight, you can go right. Everywhere you go, there's like a building to go in or a new place to liberate. The openness of it, you could use sniper rifles, you could use pistols, you can get up close and personal with a shotgun. It felt like nothing I've experienced before because this was all contained within one first person shooter. I was like, the fact that I can drive and I've got, I've got, I was going to say colleagues. I've got, you know, colleagues in the Marines (laughs) just in the back of my Jeep. He's my work friend. (laughs) He's my work friend. We're going to grab beers later. (laughs) That, that feeling, I played through that portion of the level so many times, that Mm. open world area, getting to go reestablish all those fights and have them was just like some of the most fun probably the most fun i've ever had in a single player shooter game in my life honestly i i, I don't blame you i can i remember exactly what you're talking yeah. about such a good level such so a good, good. Game. so much fun i know i hope yeah i hope we always talk about halo like mm-hmm. i feel like somehow it's gone away for a bit now and it's like they've tried to reinvigorate the franchise by keeping it the same <sighs> and the more i look at a game like tears of the kingdom yeah. i'm like maybe you just have to give up what worked and do something completely different. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know what the solution for Halo it is. It also does very old school storytelling yeah. and having a protagonist that doesn't speak, it just can't fly anymore. It's, I think you need to feel for Well, Master no, Chief. no. Master Chief speaks. He speaks but Link now? doesn't. <laughs> Link doesn't. Oh, man, it's almost just, the opposite. Yeah. Man, that's just really euchred my but argument you, there. You can't see his mm. face, which is always kind of that's like, uh, it's 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 basically like you are Master Chief Oh, sorry. Chief no, I didn't yeah, mean yeah, speak. Yeah. I meant see his face. Yeah, sorry. That's exactly what I meant. Jesus Christ. Yeah. I just heard myself make that argument. I'm like, well, that's yeah wrong um okay well that's oh, that's a really good one all right my number two yeah it's gonna be from it's gonna be scarecrow's level from batman nice. arkham asylum i love i love i know exactly what you're talking about yes it is it is so good when he switches off the monitor i legitimately thought my game had stopped working mm. for a second i was like oh mm. you know i just it's just i love the design of the scarecrow we've seen so many depictions of scarecrow i think this one is like really nails the cartoony yes but scary vibe yep. to it and it also just out, it gives you outside the walls of arkham yeah. And in a game that can feel very contained because it's inside of, uh, you know, four walls and stuff yep. like that inside of a prison, this makes it feel like limitless yes. and endless and only explores what is the most scary is inside your own mind. And it shows the endlessness of your mind. And yes. it's just so scary. I love it. The design of it is so perfect. And uh, it's hard. It's interesting. And scary. And scary. Yeah. It's like it checks off all the boxes. Yeah. I just think it's a great level. Anytime a game plays with my understanding of what my console is doing yes. and makes me think that the hardware might be broken. Like yeah. eternal darkness or something like that totally i'm always a fan of that when done right i think sometimes it might be frustrating if if not i can imagine that being incredibly annoying and sometimes cheap, you know yes. what i mean like yes. just kind of yeah 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 oh we turn the tv off i'm like don't do that because then i just press power and when i press power on my tv it turns my console off i don't want to do yes, this yeah. Doing that. <laughs> yeah i love that i love that pick i love arkham asylum i think you like a ton of good levels from from that one alone right 
Wow, no uh, crossover yet, eh? No crossover between yet. our picks. I was, I, love I, this. Was, I, oh, I pulled one off of my list, thinking it would rep- get representation on yours because I have so many uh, to go. Well, I'll, we'll, we'll go through some honorable. Yeah, sure, sure. End, but uh, my number one is the. In my mind, when I think of levels, I think of, or I think of video games. I think of this. Okay. I think of the experience playing this potential first level in this game. The reason I say potential is because this game starts out and you can go left or you can go right. Mm. It's very similar to your number 10. It's my number one. It's Yoshi's Island 2 from Super Mario World. Love it. I yeah. love this. This is a great choice. Yeah. It's so, it's the it's the it's the color, it's the the sound, the music for all the same reasons you said about yeah. your number 10 pick. Yeah. Uh uh but for me the the Mario game I played the most was Super Mario World for sure and that original uh, uh, and the yeah. additional colors of the Super Nintendo. The yeah. game looked fucking go- gorgeous. We played it pretty recently on this we podcast. Did. It looks fucking unbelievable. It to still this looks day. so good. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I, I really don't. Yeah, I really don't blame you. Was there any other levels from this game that you were thinking about? You know what? I, I was, I was considering maybe the first time you enter a castle or the first time you enter a haunted mansion, but yeah. I couldn't think of one specifically. Yeah. that did it for me. And I think the reason why. Uh, I ultimately went with this one is because I think I could do it with my eyes closed. You get Yoshi, which is unbelievable. Yeah, you yeah. get the music cues. You you get that that iconic football looking uh, uh, yeah. uh, Koopa. Uh, uh, he throws baseballs. He throws baseballs. Yeah, some of them throw matter. footballs. Yeah. They you, you jump on their head a whole bunch. Yeah, eat some apples. Pop some speakers. I just, everything about it, I seriously uh, could like recreate it in my head without even thinking about it. Like Sergio Perez, who's an F1 driver, okay. uh, did this thing recently where he completed a track virtually, like on, on one of the F1 games with a blindfold. No Because he way. knows it so well with his car. And I'm like, I almost think I could do that with this level. That's in, amazing. In yeah. yeah. No, I, I can't argue with this at all. I love it. And if you also uh, saw that episode recently, you can see how much Mikey is attached to Yoshi. Yeah. <laughs> He has a real. Don't fucking leave Yoshi. Yeah, he'd he'd rather die than leave Yoshi. Which I just, yeah, because he's my friend, Andrew, and you're a coward when you play those games. (laughs) Like, I don't want to get hurt by a baseball. You're like, oh, Yoshi ate six people for you. (laughs) Yes, exactly. And you're just gonna leave him behind. Just gonna leave him behind. I'm, I'm in for survival. I'm in for number one. (sighs) Uh, All right. Yoshi is my number one. Speaking of number one, Mm. uh, okay, my number one. I'm just gonna read you the PA announcement that is attached to this game. Okay. Being the best at what you do can really take it out on you. So unwind at Fort Frolic, gamble, shop, take in the show, or meet a new friend. All at Fort Frolic. Fort Frolic, where the best and the brightest celebrate success. Fort Frolic from Bioshock is the level that is... You are tracked by egocentric, demented artist Sander Cohen, cut off from both Atlas and Ryan. You have to track down and kill Cohen's former disciples to be allowed to leave the district, especially if you listen to all the tapes and really explore the place. Instead of just racing through Cohen's masterpiece, you get the real depths of what makes this game beautiful, but not only that, the area that is so much more fun because it isn't a scary area. Yeah. It is supposed to be the area that you were supposed to have fun if you live there uh, in, in Rapture. And I just love the juxtaposition of like fun, it's, it's the theater and it's terrifying. Yes. The bar and it's terrifying, yes. you know? And I really just think this is the one level that would, I will also say the runner up was just the intro. Yeah, um, I, I I thought about that as well. Yeah, yeah, just the intro where you get to and you see the statue of Andrew Ryan and things like that. But I think this is genuinely more terrifying and it has uh, all the elements of gameplay that makes it kind of fun. Yeah, in the musical cues, I mm. remember specifically from this area, there's a Tchaikovsky uh, uh, symphony that plays. It's in Waltz of the Nutcracker, I think, when when you finally like go to face off against uh, uh, Sandra Cohen. Sandra Cohen. Yeah. Um, good old Sandy. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Sander I, is interesting first name, but yeah. Oh, Sander. It's Sander. Oh, it's said, like not Alexander and it's not Xander. Yeah. Sander. Sander. I know. Was that an old name? I didn't know. I don't know. Down in Rapture, they were doing all sorts of weird shit. <laughs> yeah. Sticking. Do you want to, do you want to mess up your face? Do you want to change your name? <laughs> Make up a name. Make up a name. You could be the circus of values. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Circus of values. I, I love, I love that pick. I knew somewhere from Bioshock was going to be on yours. And it was a matter of, of, I, I, I almost consider doing the first interaction you have with a big daddy. Oh. And I was like, that feels like a level in right. and of itself. Also on a stage. Yes. Yes. Yeah. 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 Uh, uh, Sander on a stage was. <laughs> this is a double seven joke. <laughs> yeah. Sander on the top. Sander on the top. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, Xenia on the top. Uh, no, I, I I love that pick. I love. I mean, I mean, how much more can we say about Bioshock? It's, I, it's just one of the greatest experiences we've had. And for a moment that kind of sums up the creepiness, the the ability to see what would have been great about the place. Yes. Juxtapose, like you said, with everything that makes it terrifying. Yeah. Like 
Sanders seems to be having a good time right now. Yeah. Like this is creeping me out. Yeah. I, I'm not comfortable. Yeah. He's one of the few people that seems to uh, still be relatively human. Yes. Like, and as opposed to the splicers and he knows what he's doing yeah. and he's lost his mind. I, I think I agree with you with that's what makes it so much fun and dangerous is that the, the PA announcement is like a great example of that. You would just kind of play and you're like, God, this is what this was like. It's a yes. mall for Christ's yeah. sake. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And like, and just people are trying to kill you left and right. I think it's interesting too, the the uh, 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 the uh thing about him being, Sandra Cohen, Sandra Cohen is the one who who plays the piano yeah. and stuff, right? Yeah, yeah okay. Yeah, yeah. I, just, I just want to make sure that I'm that I'm I'm pulling on that, that mm-hmm. thread right. But the the interesting thing you said is he seems the most human, so he's lost his mind. And I think what what truly makes him terrifying is that he hasn't lost his mind. He just is a psychopath. He's he allowed to be himself. Yes, yes he didn't yeah, need yes. to be a splicer. Nothing needed to drive him mad. He's just a a terrifying human being <laughs> yeah. it, like he would have been like this up on top in rapture you're like what were you doing when rapture was just operating normally were you also fucking with people just like this terrorizing dancers yes and, yeah yeah I know. Like, exactly yeah so it's it's a really also the the neon is such a fun look yeah. in these dark you know wet areas and stuff yes. like that it reflects it really beautifully so it's always just kind of when i close my eyes this is the level that i always think about yeah that, that, that's why you put so much neon in your bathroom right because your bathrooms are notoriously dark and wet yeah dark and white 100 percent. i've yeah. got a very european style bathroom where the <laughs> It's just, there's no separation in the tub or the sink. No. It's just all one room. Never, I'm tell, I'm putting this out into the universe. Yeah. Never give me a hotel room that has a shower right above the toilet. Never do that. Oh, I see what you're saying. Yeah, I actually like the idea that it's just a big shower room. No. Why? Because it makes everything wet. I don't, the, right. my, my biggest, one of my biggest fears in life right. is, is, is wet tile in a bathroom. Why? Because it, who knows what's making it wet that's well, the shower <laughs> but what if you're peeing everywhere i don't know that oh you're worried about you're worried about the people you share this bathroom with and and probably and honestly being if i'm being honest me as well <laughs> yeah, i don't have great aim it's just too easy at that point you're like i could go to the toilet i could just aim at this floor drain <laughs> it's just so much easier if you it's pee like in the it shower. is 12 inches away like nah it's fine 12 inches may not be a lot to you but that is a uh it's, that's, it's, it's, <laughs> it's like it's like how a mile would be much more big for, much more big much for more. like an ant to yes. traverse Huge. for me to aim 12 more inches Ugh. with my little wang also i could brush my teeth and pee at the same time you know yeah. like that kind of i'm i'm really in it for time i need to be as you know fast as possible right, right? because you got lists to put together I got so many lists speaking of time those those are our top those tens. Are our top tens. uh notably absent uh time and going fast sonic nowhere on there okay i almost had sonic on there i thought you were gonna have green hill zone i almost and, had green hill zone. and i did i i had my list changed because I'm like, I need to give representation to some of these uh, uh, levels and I figured you would have it. You know, the other one that uh, not in here is uh, Metal Gear Solid. Right. Nowhere. Uh, that yes. was the other one where I thought, well, maybe Psycho Mantis, maybe. Thought about Psycho Grey Mantis. Wolf, Grey Wolf, yeah. yeah, Grey Wolf as well. I, yeah, it's tough. I, like from from specific moments in, in, in Metal Gear, yeah. I don't know that I had as many that really worked for me in such a like singular way. Yeah. So much of Metal yeah. Gear is all encompassing yeah um but yeah I, I i think it very clearly could have had uh, uh some moments in it for I, sure well i agree with you do you want to do a little recap let's do a recap yeah okay so my number 10 is world one one for super mario bros chapter 11 at number nine excuse me chapter 11 is hidden in place site from our charter four number eight is tony hawk four alcatraz level number seven 007 archives number six medal of honor front lines uh d-day invasion level uh number five is the winter the last of us the winter section Number four, GTA five, four leaf clover. Number three, Red Dead, Red Dead Redemption two, chapter three, blood feuds and ancient modern. Man, there's so many numbers That's... in these things. Um, number two, Batman Arkham Asylum, Scarecrow's level. And number one, Fort Frolic from Bioshock. I love it. My uh, number 10 is Operation Overlord level one from Call of Duty, the original Call of Duty. Number nine is Rusty Bucket Bay, uh, which sounds like a like a country album or something like yeah, that. Like yeah, Luke yeah. Holmes. Rusty Bucket Bay. Uh, Birth of the concert, con- Conservation Movement is uh, my number eight. Number seven is the Milkman Conspiracies. Number six is the Snake Pit. The Snake Pit. The Spike Pit from yeah. Mortal Kombat. Number five is the first level from Contra 3. The street level. Number four is Facility from GoldenEye. Number three is the Garden Area. The opening Garden Area from Mario 64. Number two, Mission Number 2, Halo from Halo. Number one is Yoshi's Island 2. Not the video game. The level in Super Mario World. All right. I love it, man. This is great. These were these were fun ones to talk about because it, it really is, man, there I'm I had trouble thinking of a list, and I'm sure we'll find one, 
where it was more the encapsulation of the things that we really like yes. in video games. Yeah, 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 yeah. This yeah. is like even more than characters or bosses or something like that. Yep. It's the actual game and the way you play it from front to back and back to forward that makes it fun, yep. right? It's just, some of it was sentimentality and nostalgia yeah. the first time we'd experienced a certain thing in a game. And then it just also opened us up to conversations about those games as well. Like, yeah. I, you know, as much as I talk about Red Dead sometimes in yes. a negative way, I could talk about that game for fucking ever. I, I did. I did really enjoy my time with it when I was spending time with it. <laughs> there we um, go. Uh, I do want to say you chose one from GTA. I had a Vice City mission on my list, uh, very close to making my list, called Four Iron, which was a side mission. It's exactly the one I was going to say. Is it, is it really? That is exactly the one I was going to say. I don't say. know. I don't know if it was just me, wow. but that was one of the most iconic side missions I've ever had in Vice City. I loved it. There was something so wacky about it yeah. and weird and fun, chasing someone down with a shopping or a, a golf cart, yeah. beating him with a four iron. It was fun. I loved that one. That see, that's so funny. That one. Uh, there's so many other games that we didn't name ones from. Yeah. I had a couple from Assassin's Creed that I was kind of looking at okay, too. Yeah. And I was like, oh man, you know, the first time you meet Da Vinci or something like true, that, and you're like, oh, that's kind of fun. Yeah. Um, so yeah, and obviously there's tons of games that we didn't mention. So please get at us at Richard Great Mikey, at Richard Great Andy, at Richard Great Pod for all the levels that you think are the best and your favorites, the ones that we didn't mention especially. Well, until then though, we love every single one of you and we can't wait to talk to you soon. My name's Andrew Baskin, with me as always is the bad boy of podcasting, Mr. Bebop himself, who's Mikey, doing air guns in the air right now. <laughs> Mikey Aaron Yeah, there we go. So I'm sorry. shooting the Braithwites. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. We got keep doing that there are <laughs> thousands of them those inbred fucks uh my name is andrew bascom wait i did that my name is andrew bascom you're mike yarenworth this is a retrograde podcast <laughs> game over this was my favorite level <laughs> slam my head into a wall it's the hardest level we've ever played jesus christ <laughs> furnished by sad styles productions do you see the baby showering <laughs> i can't even see the baby shower. <laughs>